when I did my first World Championships when I was 15, I was really nervous and I did like uh, mistakes in my, my competition, which, which wasn't usual at this time. I was really good prepared, but then I just made different mistakes because, uh, because I was nervous, too excited maybe. And then my dad asked his brother if he could work with me. So that was the point where we started to work together. And after a few weeks when we did like the basics of metal coaching, it already helped a lot. Yeah, he's exhausted. He saves his best for last. Well, before we started the mental training, I've never heard or I never took any attention about sports psychology. I mean, I was 15, so I never thought about things like that. But when we started and when I felt like it helps, it really helps a lot because that was the last, last three, four or five percent which, uh, which you need to be successful. You know, then I was like, okay, that's the best thing I have done. Contesting four Olympic Games, Fabian Hambusham finally won gold. The first German gymnast in 20 years to become Olympic champion on the horizontal bar. And I, I really felt like it helps me a lot and I uh, think uh, mental training made me this successful. Without it, I think I had no chance at all. Unfortunately, not everyone has had the chance to experience the effects of professional mental coaching like Fabian Hambüchen did when he won the Olympic gold medal in 2016. The topic of sports psychology is still surrounded by a mist of unanswered questions and it seems that the image of professional mental coaching has not yet become clear. To entangle the strings that are attached to sports psychology, the first and very important step should be to shed light on the actual work of a sports psychologist. Sports psychology is simply about helping us think and feel the right emotions and the right words so that our bodies can then go on and do what we want it to do, which is perform. Well, I'm working with uh, elite athletes and I'm working with helping them, them do, to develop uh, both in their performance, like to become a better athlete in whatever sport they're doing, but I'm also helping them to develop as a, a person. And Coaches can be really good when it comes to sports psychology. Good parents can do a lot of good things. Even a really good friend who knows how to listen and see something from your point of view can be really helpful. So I don't think sports psychologists are the only people who can offer psychological help. What we have though, is that we are trained, we are, have developed a set of skills and a body of knowledge that makes us uh, likely to be more effective and more helpful than other group of people. And I think the other thing we bring is that we're based on science and on research and knowledge. We're not shooting from the hip, we're not making it up. Monthly workshops is a common scenario that I do for teams and another scenario is work with individual athletes that I for example meet one athlete six to eight times and we work on issues like um, performance anxiety or um, how to balance the demands of a dual career and that would go on about six to eight sessions that you work on one topic and actually go deep into that topic. You know, when I was writing my PhD, I put a joke to my PhD and the joke was, how many psychologists does it take to change a light bulb? And the answer is, as many as you like, but the light bulb's got to want to change. <laughs> now my master's, my PhD supervisor wouldn't let me keep the joke, but I think there's a real truth in that. I think that, you know, all athletes can benefit doesn't matter whether they're having issues that are handicapping their lives. It doesn't matter whether they are a person that wants to try and extend their strengths and get better at what they do. But I think sports like can be of benefit to pretty much anybody. In 
In a recent study, it was stated that only 10% of the athletes go to a sports psychologist when facing barriers or problems compared to the other options they have, like the coach, friends or family. I think, to be honest, there's a stigma. There's like some saying that, okay, you don't need a sports psychologist, otherwise you're a little crazy. Or, I'm not crazy, I don't need one, you know, like similar to maybe a, not only sport, but just psychology in general. Of course, I, I talk to other athletes, if they are working with a mental coach and many of them didn't at this time, especially in Germany, it's like still the old coaches, they say, if you need a sports psychologist, you're stupid. And many of the coaches, they think they are the coach for everything. The coach for your training, the coach for the mental things, the coach for nutrition. But as a, as a professional athlete, you should find people for every area. Also ich bin werde nicht mehr vom Verband unterstützt und dann kann ich da halt auch nicht einfach so hingehen, sondern müsste es finanziell selber ähm, regeln. Ja und so viel war es mir dann irgendwie dann doch noch nicht wert. The for me is very hard like to receive uh, feedback or like some other comments like from the outside, you know. But at the same time, maybe I'm a little bit afraid uh, uh, to open that beast inside of me, like this mental beast, you know, and who can take power of me, you know. From there. Maybe I will open my fears, you know, like even more that I that I am because because I just I just I just take it out, you know. So what needs to happen that the majority of athletes becomes aware of these opportunities and can decide to take action? I think the most important thing is to educate both coaches, uh, athletes and people around what are what is sports psychology, how do we work nowadays? I think the first thing we can do is we can offer a good service. The more we help and the more effective we are, then I think that will be one of the best Lots of marketing. But I also feel that it really helps our area of sport psychology that athletes, that high performance athletes that are seen on TV, that they actually um, talk about their work with sport psychologists so that it is something that is just normal and that belongs to the training just as um, the um, weight training does or nutrition does. I think that you know, the groups that we belong to, you know, ISSP, BEPSAC, whatever professional body that we belong to, we want to be encouraging those bodies to be getting out there and spreading the word. To give you an example, in the UK, there's lots of people working in sport who are not well trained. But they're still able to earn a living because the athletes, their clients, believe that what they do is a good job. What I think we want to do is we want to get our professional bodies out into the community and, and telling them and explaining to athletes, you know, this is what a sports psychologist does, this is why they're good. What is happening progressively is that now teams start with their very young athletes to introduce sports psychologists. Um, for example, already at the age of eight or nine and we do um, very playful interactions with them, a bit of team building, a bit of um, stress and recovery workshops. And they get used to the role of a sport psychologist in very young age. So when they are 15 or when they go to the senior level, they think that the sport psychologist is just always there. So they're used to it. I became really interested in sport psychology in 2006 when Jürgen Klinsmann was the first to openly work with a sport psychologist in uh, football or in soccer. Um, and that was the days when I was interested in it and everyone told me you will never find work in it, that's a field that won't become big. And now 12 years later I think we've made huge strides in the field and so many more people are aware of sport psychologists. So on a scale from 0 to 10 I would say maybe we are at the 5 to 6 but there's a lot more space to grow. I would advise you contrary to what was been told to me when I was studying, everyone told me don't do it and I would tell you to do it and I would tell future sport psychologists to do it. Many athletes and experts seem to share a common view. Sport psychology is on the verge to unfold its potential but there is still work to do.
implementing the topic of mental strength into coaching education programs, removing stigmas by raising the acceptance within the athletes community and last but not least, guaranteeing a high quality and professional service to those who choose to work with us. These are the challenges it takes to change the perception of sports psychology from something blurred into a clear picture that everyone benefits from.